Two men from Gosport will take on an endurance swim in a little over a month's time when they take to the water in ride on the Isle of Wight and make their way across to Stokes Bay. Our reporter Ben Trappers met them for a training session to catch up on their progress. Simon and Andy are both keen swimmers who decided to up the ante and take on a longer distance challenge. After a brief bit of online research, Simon found a charity event that raises money for a cause close to his family's heart, motor neuron disease, a debilitating illness that ultimately took the life of his mother-in-law. Training began in January, and following a successful fitness test swim a few weeks ago, covering 5,000 metres, or 200 lengths of a pool, they've now started taking their sessions out onto the open water. I asked them about the practical differences faced when taking on a sea-based swim. The challenges are really getting used to the different environment. Obviously the water temperature, the water being cloudy so you can't see the bottom, um, and then the waves because in a swimming pool, very flat. Whereas here, as you get your head up looking around, all you see is the wave, not the shoreline. Yeah, it's changing your technique when you swim in the, in the, within the waves as well. When you normally turn to breathe in the swim pool, you nice, nice deep breath, but here you get a nice deep um, lung full of salt water. So it's just a matter of um, adjusting your technique, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. The higher out the water. Whilst the lure of the cool sea can provide a welcome respite from hot summer weather for visitors to the beach, the longer sessions spent in solent water still require preparation and sense to avoid any problems. I went with my wife and children, wore my wetsuit for the first time in the water. After half an hour, I started to get chafing underneath my armpit and that hurt quite a bit. So I thought, well, I'll take it off in warm, nice warm water and swam for another half an hour without it on. And then it's when I got out of the water, walking towards here, towards the car park, 10 minutes later, I just couldn't stop shaking. Um, and my wife initially told me, well, I think that sounds like mild hypothermia. It went after about half an hour, I was fine, and then I went mm. swimming with you a couple of days later, and the yeah. same thing happened again. I didn't have my wetsuit on this time, I just had my, my vest on, my rush vest, and the same thing happened again. And so she said, go and see your GP, and he suggested hypothermia straight away as soon as I told him what I'd been doing. So he said, always wear a wetsuit, uh, your hat, be too hot to get in the water, and then as soon as you get out, get dried as quickly as you can and get warm clothing on your head and your body. Which Get a hot chocolate, it's hot, chocolate, sh yeah. hot and sugary, yeah, so hot it sugary replaces drinks. everything you've lost. It's obvious but it's very sensible, <laughs> it makes complete sense. The challenge itself is planned for the 25th of August, weather permitting, and we'll see the pair set off from Ride at around 8am. The aim is to see them make sure at Stokes Bay shortly before 10 o'clock. But Andy explains some of the potential obstacles and hindrances the pair could face on the day. The currents can be a challenge getting used to it because sometimes when we swim here between a couple of the boys it's two minutes going one way, five minutes going the other. Mm. So we've got a flavour of what the currents can be like. And then out in the middle obviously we've got to as you say, go across the shipping lanes. Yes. And the golden rule is we give way to the boats. Yes. Uh, and that's in the way of a big tanker. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what the kayaks are there for as well, just to say, hey guys, have you seen the one that's coming? And <laughs> signal to hang on and stop. Yes. And just tread water for a minute while it goes past. And we also have to have a, a little sort of high visibility buoy that we pull along behind. It floats very high in the water, so it doesn't add any drag or any noticeable drag. It's right but it's, it's, it's like the cycling equivalent, or the swim equivalent of a high visibility jacket for swimmers. So hopefully everybody can see us. Ben Trappers, for that solent.